Sauce DMC to K-I-N-G. I'ma say this once, I ain't gonna say it again. DMC in the place to be, and the place for you to be is right here with Fred White. Tales from the pen. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Salute people, we back. Fred White, Tales from the Pen. If you're new to the channel, go down and hit the subscribe button. Click the bell notification. And then make sure the bell is shaded in. This time, this way, anytime I put up a video, you will know about it. So today, we want to talk about evil at its highest level. Evil at its highest form. This guy right here, I'm about to show you. Mr. Jose Santiago. Let's get a look at him first. Check this out. Let's look at this bozo. That, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, is the face of evil. That is the face of evil. What I remember about this guy... <clears throat> was his eyes. I remember a couple people, their look, their eyes. I told you about New York's youngest serial killer. I told you about his eyes. They were black. And when he looked at you, it gave you a weird, weird feeling. That's what I remember about this guy, Jose Santiago, that picture that I just showed you. He's a child rapist and a child predator. And he's living in Camus. Does that sound right? C-A-M-U-Y, Puerto Rico. Camus, Puerto Rico. <clears throat> That's where he's living right now. Let me tell you a little story about this bozo. See, back in the days, we weren't able to go on the computer and the internet and just easily get the information that we can now. Back then, you had to go on face value on what somebody told you pretty much that they were in penitentiary for. So, I was in the Queen's house with this guy. A bunch of us was in Queen's house. And, um... This guy was, this guy, you know, he used to do a lot of silly things in the house. And I remember one day, he got into it with my boy, Chill. And Chill beat him up. They went one-on-one -on -one and Chill lumped him up. But dude used to still walk around like he was a killer. Long hair, Spanish dude, big heavy set. Big, he had, he had a long mustache and... And the eyes. So one day, early in the morning, he gets called to go to court. Now, when you go to court early in the morning, it's a hassle when you're going to court. You got to get up early. You got to eat breakfast. You got to, you know, go sit in pens all day. Then you got to get transported on buses. You got to get shackled and cuffed, sent to the courthouse. Then in the courthouse, you got to go into different pens and then you may go into court for literally 30 seconds. They say adjourned and you're walking right back out. And you've, now you got to get reshackled. And now you got to wait for the bus to go back to wherever facility you are. It's a pain in the ass. It's an all day thing for sometimes for 30 seconds. <clears throat> so one day he was telling, he, 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 they told him, hey, you got, um, you got court in the morning. You know, they told him to get ready at court. He says, man, I don't have court. You know, I don't have court today. Say, yes, you do. You got to go to court. So he's beefing in the cell, whatever. They take him to court. That night, it was like five, five o'clock news or something like that. We sitting there watching the television. This dude's face pop up. Mr. Jose Santiago. <clears throat> His face pops up on the news. He was using the phones from the Queen's house to call some of his victims. He was taking little boys on the roof in Coney Island. 
and he was raping them. Some of them he actually knew. He was close with families type thing. And he was raping a bunch of little boys in Coney Island. This predator, this bozo, lame, disgusting. So we're watching the news. And he got recharged. He got a new charge. So they took him to court that day because they rearranged him for intimidating a witness because he was using the phones that were sitting right there outside the day room to call these little kids and try to intimidate them. This was on the news. Again, back then we didn't have things that you could, internets and things like that. You could just go Google and look people up, but we didn't have none of that. We had to tell him, and unless your case was a big case, no one would know. And this bozo's face is plastered on CBS, ABC News, whatever. He came back that night. He had no idea he was on the television. He came back later that night. He was doing what he was doing. Everybody was quiet when he came. Like, he should have known something was up. He came and sat down in the day room and he got what was called a blanket party. A blanket party is when we throw the blanket over his head and went to work. This way he couldn't really identify his attackers. You know, allegedly I was hitting him with a mop ringer. Allegedly. And my other boy was hitting him with, you know, locks and socks and Soap and socks and, you know, he got dragged out of there. He got dragged out of there. Laid out. Dragged his ass out of there. Fast forward 10 years later. I go to Clinton. I know a few people in Clinton. That's the thing. When you're down a long time. People spread out. No matter what jail you go to, no matter what jail, I'm going to know somebody. That's just how it is. So I go to Clinton, and I'll go through the mess hall or whatever, and I see him. No more long hair. Short mustache now, short beard. But the eyes, I knew it was him. I seen this bozo. I was towards the end of my bed. And I said, damn, I'm going to have to do something to him. Because he knows who I am. He remembers me. He looked at me, act like he didn't remember. Whatever. I, you know, I, he looked away or whatever. But I knew. And I remember what I had done. And I remember seeing him bloody and dragged. He got dragged out of the day room. Look, dragged. Laid out. I remember. So I see him, he's hanging around some Rat Hunter dudes. I had thought he was Rat Hunter, apparently he wasn't Rat Hunter. But he was hanging out with some Rat Hunter dudes. And I seen him with my man Flacco, and I knew Flacco from another jail. So when I seen Flacco, I called Flacco by himself, I said, let's talk. So we spun the yard in Clinton, and the yard in Clinton is like a dirt sand, and we just went back and forth. We just rolled in circles. And I told him, I said, man, your boy. Because I seen him with him. I said, that kid? He's like, yeah, that's my boy. He was his best man and everything at his wedding and everything. This dude. Like he, when I told Flacco, this dude is a sexual predator. He didn't believe me. Because again, this was his boy. But Flacco was, you know, one of the hunters, so... You know, when, when you start giving out information like that and telling people like that, number one, I put myself out there. Right? I put myself out there. You got to show and prove that. So, again, Flock was my man, so it wasn't like that. He knew I was telling the truth. I knew dude's name and everything. So we go. I tell him, come on, let's go to the phones. Now, at this time, by this year, this is 10 years later, now the internet is up. Now you could Google people. Now you could go search their crimes and all that. I called home. Called the family. Hey, Google, put this in the computer. Boom, boom, boom. And there was a thousand Jose Santiago's, but my boy knew his ID numbers. Put these ID numbers in. Boom, boom, boom. What's it say? And I gave him the phone. Sexual assault, sexual battery, like, you know, 
all types of sodomies and yeah he couldn't believe it again he was he was he's apparently he was cool with the dude but in that situation i had to play chess otherwise i would have had to do that myself i would have had to stab him but what, what happened was he got hit they hit him for being a, a sexual prey he couldn't produce any paperwork they, you know, you, you know, they already knew because the charges was there. They, they you know, what I mean, they knew that he couldn't produce, he didn't want to produce paperwork. He got dealt with. Chess, you got to play chess sometimes. But looking on the sexual offender re recently list, I see he's in Puerto Rico right now, and I can't say I don't know. Camus again, Camus, C A M U Y, Puerto Rico. That's where he is. So all those people in that area of Puerto Rico, please watch your kids. Watch your kids. Because those kind of guys don't change. How he got released from prison in the first place, I don't know how many years he did, but it's ridiculous. When you're raping kids and raping boys on the roof, you think those guys get rehabilitated? Crazy. I wonder what's really going on in Puerto Rico, man, and I hope there's no little kids around him. And that's the story of Jose Santiago, sexual predator, deviant, clown, bozo. Love you guys. You know the motto, people. Experience is the greatest teacher. But somebody else's experience can be just as valuable if you pay attention and listen. On that note, people, Fred White, signing off.